There's fun and learning around the bend. You can even do it with your best friend. If there's science stuff that you like to know, come watch Allie and Coco Science Show. If you can see this huge moth, oh, you can't see it. Anyway, guys, it is 10 o'clock. Look at this moth. Wow, you see that? It's huge. Clip's gonna bark at it because she thinks it's a bird. Clip, oh, let's go take a look. Careful. Let it go. Wow. Oh my god. Hey guys, welcome to Allie and Coco Science Show. We have an injured, some sort of luna moth. Look at that beauty. Wow. Wow. We look at this. It's injured. This poor guy, shivering for dear life. It is a male. Remember, a long time ago, found a big moth with the fuzzy antenna. That is a male. They use that to pick up pheromones from the females in the air. Anyway, me and Colette are on a potty walk. It's 10 o'clock. And come on, we gotta go potty. Don't be scared. We gotta go potty right now. Really cool. He's not doing too well. Looks like he got eaten, bit by some, some bird or predator. Come on, Colette, let's go potty. Anyway. Um, Hurricane Irma will hit in about 24 hours, and Colette is not a fan of rain, so we're taking a break. This is the calm before the storm. Nothing much going on. Come on, let's go potty. Get your little feet wet. Come on, go potty. Anyway. Hey guys, welcome to Allie and Coco Science Show. Just casually walking Miss Coco in my lab coat. Oh my gosh, Colette. Do you see what I see? Whoa, Coco, check check this guy out. Oh man. What wait, what are you doing down there? No, check it out. Oh, be nice. Yeah. Guys, we found a it's an imperial moth. Look. Isn't that amazing? I wouldn't have seen that if I wasn't keeping my eyes peeled. Like I always tell you guys, now the imperial moth, uh, imperial with an eye, its scientific name is Acleus imperialis. Isn't that cool? Now these guys occur all around North America and South America, but they haven't, they've been kind of not showing up in the Northeast. You know what I'm talking about? The Northeast? Yeah. And that's one of the reasons is possibly due to habitat fragmentation. Yeah, so these guys are losing their habitat. They, they lay their eggs in like oak and pine areas like here in Florida. Um, no, we're not gonna go for that. Yeah, so I'm gonna leave him. But crazy thing, you think this guy eats oak and pine? No, you know, crazy thing about moths is some of them don't even have moth parts, moth parts moth parts? They have moth parts. They don't have mouth parts as adults. So they come out of their cocoons, they, they finish pupating, and then they... No, Colette. So they finish pupating. They come out of the ground. They actually pupate underground. No, we're gonna leave it. It's a squirrel. And, um, and they don't have mouth parts. And what they do is they lay their eggs on the oaks and the pines so that their babies have stuff to eat. Hey, come on out. Okay, so they lay their eggs on the plants that the babies are going to eat. The babies go through five instars. An instar is kind of that time period between molting. So they molt five different times before they pupate. Now by the third one, you can tell that the caterpillars are starting to look different from each other. And the crazy thing about 
an imperial moth like this guy, they all have different patterns. They all have that yellowish purplish, sorry, that yellowish color and that purplish brown, and they're all different. But they all kind of look like dead leaves. I thought this was a dead leaf hanging from the tree, and then I looked up and said, huh, nothing could have fallen from nowhere. So then I got a closer look and found this beautiful guy actually a female and you can't tell because its antenna are closed up in its body but the males have big fuzzy antenna to catch pheromones in the air the females don't need to look for pheromones <gasps> my camera died but like I always say keep your eyes and ears open when you're walking around because you never know what you might see and then for a question of the week um, let's just go with What's your favorite form of animal camouflage? I really like to look at insects because they have no other way to defend themselves, unless they bite. So they always try and blend in. Colette, what's your favorite? You know, Colette, you always have great answers for these. Where do you come up with them? Anyway guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to thumbs up this video if you learned something new. Uh, answer down below the question of the week. What's your favorite form of animal camouflage? And uh, don't forget to follow us on our Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, you know, all the social ow, social media stuff. And um, if you want to get notified when we put videos up, hit that notification bell. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks, guys. You ready to go inside? Let's go inside. Let's go get some AC.